So you want to install air suspension on your car, but you don't know how. Well, don't worry, fam, because I got you. Today, we are going to be installing air suspension on the BRZ, and this video is going to be a complete guide on how to install air suspension on pretty much any car. So installing air suspension is actually a lot easier than it looks. I do have two major tips for you guys. One is to stay organized. That goes for pretty much any install. The more you stay organized, the easier the whole process is going to be. And number two is making sure you have everything that you would possibly need. I like to lay everything out, make sure I have everything everything, kind of see how everything would plug into each other before we actually start plugging it into the car. We have our front air struts right over here and then our rear air struts right over here. They look pretty much like coilovers, but instead of a spring, you have a bag. This bag is what's gonna be holding in the air. And when it comes down to the brand of the air struts you wanna go with, it really does come down to personal choice. There's AccuAir, AirLift, AirTech. It just pretty much all comes down to your preference. So now once you've figured out which air struts you're gonna go with, the next thing to figure out is management. You need something to manage everything that you're doing. You need something to manage the air pressure in the fronts, in the rears, everything. My number one recommendation is to go with the AirLift 3P system. I swear by these things, they are like the best. Now, I know a lot of people will opt for the V2 option because it's a little bit more budget friendly, but the only thing I have to say to that is just wait a little bit longer, save up for just a tad bit longer, or just pick up the three-piece system used because you can get them for a fairly good deal, but the three-piece system is a hell of a lot better than the V2. You guys have definitely seen the Airlift three-piece system on other bagged cars. It comes with this little cool iPod looking remote thing. With this remote, you can control each and every single bag and you have five presets. So you can have your aired up all the way, aired out all the way, your riding height, high riding height, low riding height, whatever you wanna do. Not only that, but let's just say your compressor is leaking or there's a fault in the system, the airlift controller will tell you right up here on the screen. I'm telling you guys, just save yourself the headache and pick up an airlift 3P management. I'm telling you guys, the management is super important because it is the brains behind the entire air suspension setup. This right here is the airlift 3P manifold and this is basically the brains behind everything. This is the computer, all the air comes in and out of here and this controls everything. Now with the management, you also need air compressors to pump in air into the tank. When it comes down to compressors, you choose how many you want. We're going with two compressors. You can go with one compressor or you can go with three compressors, however many you want you choose. Personally, I feel more comfortable with two compressors because let's say one compressor goes out, which they do, you still have this other compressor to kind of save the day. So you got your air struts, they're gonna go up and down. You got your management that's gonna control everything and you got your compressor that's gonna pump in air. Finally, you need to make sure that you have an air tank. This is an airlift tank. There are a ton of different brands and styles that you can go with, but this is the airlift five gallon tank, I believe. There's a ton of different air tanks that you can go with. I know they have pancake air tanks that kind of fit inside of your spare tire wheel well. It's like super hidden, which I really like. Or you can go with a traditional looking tank kind of like this. It takes up a lot of trunk space, so just be wary of that. You can get a bigger tank, you can get a smaller tank, whatever you want to do. So the management also has a wiring harness that comes with it, which I laid down over here. I'm not gonna jump into it right now. I laid it out so you guys can kind of get a visual of how this is gonna sit inside the car before it actually goes inside. But this is the wiring harness that's going to supply power to our whole air system over here. Enough talking about it, let's get to work. So the first thing that I think everyone should do is just tear apart everything. Hear me out for a sec. It's a lot harder to just kind of take things apart as you're going about the install. It's much easier just tearing everything apart, installing the entire air suspension, and then putting everything back together. Trust me, just do it. Take apart everything, you'll thank me later. We already have the car on jack stands. So let's get the wheels off, the stock suspension off, and pretty much just take apart this entire interior. When I say the entire interior, I don't actually mean the entire interior, just everything that's gonna be in our way. Depending on what car you have, it is gonna be a little different, but it's pretty much the same thing for every car. I already have the car on jack stands, so let's get the wheels and the stock struts off. Stock struts are now off of the car. We're gonna take it a step further and take apart the interior. So the management, tank, compressors, they're all gonna sit inside the trunk. So we're gonna clear out the trunk, take out the trunk liner. We're gonna take out the spare tire, jack, and all that stuff. So everything from the management side is gonna be living right here in the trunk. Now don't forget, we have this wiring harness. So this wiring harness is gonna connect to the management and then it has to run all the way up to the front of the car. So obviously we're gonna have to tuck it in all nicely. So any panels that we're going to need to take apart to feed that through the car, they're all gonna come off now. Like I said, we're gonna take the trunk apart, 
the trunk linings off, stepping inside the car now. We're gonna take uh, the back seats out as well. It's just gonna make the job a lot easier. All of the side panels, because underneath of here, we're gonna tuck our wires and our air hoses. So all this is gonna come off the driver's side as well as the passenger side. Oh my God, this is so gross. There's a massive bug and my face was right near that. Oh my God, it's just gross. So this trunk is obviously disgusting. We're gonna go ahead and clean it out. I just wanna say this thing real quick. I think I forgot to mention that you always have the option of whether you wanna keep your spare tire or you don't wanna keep your spare tire. So a lot of people put the compressors and management and just everything where the spare tire used to go because that way you have full trunk usability. Now, obviously we can do that, but this is Amanda's car and I wanna make sure she always has a spare tire just in case she debeads or gets a flat or something on the side of the road. I wanna make sure that we retain the spare tire. So we're gonna make this trunk set up in a way where it's not gonna be the prettiest thing, but we're gonna make it in a way where we retain the spare tire, we retain the jack and everything else that you would possibly need in case you get a flat. But at the same time, we're also gonna make it in a way where we have the most amount of trunk storage space available. It's gonna be a little complicated. I'll show you guys real quick once we get into that. But right now we have got to clean this trunk out and we gotta continue taking off all these trunk linings. And just like that, we got the trunk all nice and clean. Way, way better than before. Along with the trunk getting clean, I started taking off all the trim pieces. We got the rear seats out. It's not necessary. It just makes the job easier for me personally. Seats are out. These side panels that were right here are out. I'm going to be tucking our airlines as well as our wire harness and everything like that in between right here. I like tucking the airlines inside of the car so they're not just exposed out into the elements. When it comes to running airlines, you can run them underneath of the car, which a lot of people do. I am personally not a big fan of doing that. I personally like to run them inside of the car. So that's what we're going to be doing today. But now we have the car all apart or at least whatever we need taken apart. So now we can start the installation process. It's going to go a lot easier now that everything's out of the car. Now it's just a matter of putting stuff in. So first, let's just start simple. Let's go ahead and throw the air struts in. These go in just like coilovers. It's just an air strut. The installation process of these is pretty much the same exact process as coilovers or even your OEM trunks. Let's go ahead and get these bad boys thrown in. of the struts are in. All the air struts have been installed exactly two Ugga Duggas and they ain't going anywhere. So we're good to go on the air struts. Like I said, it's super easy to throw them in. They go in exactly like coilovers, nothing different. These ones are definitely a lot thinner than other ones I've seen. I'm actually curious to see how far they go up and down. Usually when you see bags, they're like, a lot thicker than this. These are the slimmest bags I've ever seen, but because these are super slim, we're gonna be able to put a wider wheel in here, so that should be good. Now we are jumping back into the trunk of the car and we're gonna figure out exactly how we're gonna set everything out. It's gonna be much easier for me to show you guys my plan rather than just me tell you about it, so let's just go ahead and dive into it and I'll just kinda show you guys everything that we're doing. All right, so I've never done this, nor have I seen this ever done before, so I'm definitely experimenting with this idea. So the trunk interior trim pieces fit like this. This is like where your jack and all that good stuff fits. Now my idea here is to actually cut it out right here and try to fit this compressor in pretty much like this. That's actually exactly how it would be. So this compressor would be on this side right here. And then we have our other compressor that would just go ahead and fit on like this. Yeah, that totally works. So that's roughly where I want the compressors. I want the whole trunk to be like super flush so that it doesn't really look like there's any air suspension pieces popping out or anything like that. Besides the tank, I don't want it to look like this car's on air suspension. When you look at the trunk at least, I guess we have our compressor situation figured out. It's gonna go right over there. I'm gonna cut the styrofoam off right there so that the compressor can actually be leveled with the styrofoam that's over here. I don't want it to like protrude outwards. I want it to look really nice and really flush. I'm going for a really clean setup here guys. So hopefully, fingers crossed, this works. I wanna make sure that the compressor actually has room to breathe. So I'm giving plenty of extra space. It's a little hard to see, but we have our line right over here. So all this is gonna get deleted. Here's the piece that we're deleting. And then here is the piece that we're keeping. It's barely anything, but it's better than nothing.
All in all, here's what we're keeping. All right, so I got a little excited and I jumped ahead of myself and uh, I already cut out the little insert for the manifold. Just a little square, but this is where the manifold is gonna sit. It still isn't bolted down or anything yet. I'm still just test fitting everything, but this is where it's gonna sit in the back corner. One compressor is gonna be in this corner and then the other compressor is gonna be in this corner. Since I'm trying to hide everything and make everything look nice and clean, I'm not really going for like a show setup, so nothing has to be perfectly symmetrical or anything like that. I just wanna make sure that no wires are in the way and that we can actually still use the trunk. So far though, I have to say we're on track. Now that we have everything exactly where we want it, we can go ahead and bolt everything down so that it doesn't go anywhere. That ain't going nowhere. The manifold, the brains of everything is now officially secured down. It pops out just a tad bit, but I'm not too worried because the tank is gonna be going right over this, so I'm not too worried about that. The manifold is now secure. Time to do the same with the compressors. That's secure. That's secure. And this is secure. We're good to go. You guys just saw me do it, but all I did is drill out a little hole and then put in a screw. Now, obviously you can drill out a hole, put a bolt and then go from underneath and use a nut and all that good stuff. Yes, you can do that. I have done this so many times and have gotten away with it and have had absolutely no problems. So I'm gonna keep doing my method. Just make sure you guys put a washer down so you don't just go through the rubber grommet. This has worked for me, so I'm gonna continue with this method. Like I said, if you feel more comfortable with a bolt and a nut from underneath, do that. So now that we have everything secured down to the trunk, it's time to move on to the fun stuff. And when I say fun stuff, I don't actually mean fun stuff, I mean wiring. We have to fish all of this wiring throughout the inside of the car, which isn't as bad as it may seem, or at least it's not bad on this car. Depending on what car you do it in, it may be more of a pain in the butt. On the BRZs though, it's fairly simple. So I told you guys, I was gonna explain to you guys all about the wiring in a little bit, and the time has now finally come. I laid out the wiring alongside of the car just so it's kind of easy and I can show you guys where everything goes into. Starting right here with the main harness, this plugs right into the manifold, the brains of everything. This plug is gonna go right into here. This end of the wiring harness is going to plug into the manifold. Now, if you follow the wiring harness down just a little bit, you guys see right here, a red wire and a black wire power and ground. This is for one of the compressors. I already put a little quick disconnect at the end of it. I don't know if you guys noticed or not, but on both of the compressors, I already had put some disconnects. We have the female side on the compressors, and then we have the male sides on the wiring harness. So here are the compressor wires for one of the compressors. Now here is the connector for the second compressor. I'm trying to explain everything in the most simple way that I can. So basically the wiring harness comes with a power and a ground for one compressor. If you wanna add a second compressor, you usually have to get a second compressor harness. Here is the second compressor harness. We have the relay right over here. We have this little wire that is going to connect right here. And then again, we have a power and a ground. This is going to connect to our second compressor. And this whole wire setup is our second compressor harness. This is something you have to get separately. The second compressor harness is its own harness entirely. The only time it's gonna connect to the main harness is when we connect it to this little doohickey right over here. Moving on from here, it's nothing really exciting. This all just has to get fished throughout the car and uh, we're gonna fish this along with this at the same time. About halfway through, we have a little USB connector which connects to our little iPod that I showed you guys earlier. This is gonna go right into the cabin. You can put this literally anywhere in the cabin. You want it in your front seat, you want it in your back seat, wherever the hell you want. You can put it. Following both of the harnesses, right at the end over here, we have a 30 amp fuse, which we spliced in. That's gonna power the compressor and the manifold. And then on the second compressor harness, we have another power and grand. Already spliced in a fuse, you need that. And yeah, power and grand to operate the second compressor. So this little pink wire right here is the fuse tap. This is gonna tap into the fuse box. So technically you can tap into any fuse that you want. If you want your airlift running nonstop and never want it to turn off, then you can just tap into a fuse that never turns off. Something like the headlights fuse. Headlights are gonna turn on and off no matter if the car is on or off. So the whole airlift system is always gonna have power, but that will end up draining your battery. Personally, I wouldn't recommend it. I like using the windshield wiper fuse. When the car is in ignition mode and when the car is turned on, the airlift system works. And when the car is turned off, it completely turns 
turns off. So you don't end up draining your battery. Super important because we don't want any dead batteries out here. So be careful which fuse you tap into. Also, I want to mention this is car specific. Sometimes you're going to be using a fuse box that's actually inside of the cabin. In other cars like this car, we're using the fuse box that's in the engine bay. And that right there, boys, is the entire wiring harness situation. I promise it's not all that complicated. The first time I did it, I was a little scared. So I had somebody watching over me. But after having done it a few times, it's really not all that hard. It's pretty simple. Just double check yourself. But now that I explained everything, it's time to take these wires and feed them through the car. So the main wiring harness here and the second compressor harness is going to get fed throughout the car. We're going to connect it to the compressors, connect it to the manifold. You see right there in the corner of the trunk, there is a little gap leading to the cabin of the car. This is why we already took the interior apart. Now we don't have to do it because it's already done. You guys remember we took out the rear seats, right? Well, we did this because look at that. It gives us a little gap straight to the trunk. So we're going to feed all the wires through this little hole right here. We're gonna feed it through, tuck it underneath of the carpet, throughout the side over here, underneath the carpet, so that way you never see this. When you're sitting inside the car, you'll never know there's wires running. Well, obviously you guys would know because you did it, but you guys know what I mean. It's gonna look all super nice, super clean, and uh, OEM looking. Tuck it throughout the car, and then uh, we're gonna pull it out from the firewall. There is a firewall grommet right over there. That's where we're gonna feed the wires out of and connect it to the battery and the fuse box. Sounds easy enough, it's time to get to work. So here is the main harness. Oh man, didn't have one of those satisfying clicks. So we have power and ground for one of the compressors right here. I'm gonna connect it to this compressor. Don't forget we also have that little plug for the second compressor harness. By the way boys, if you guys do this and you guys wanna tuck your wires in real nice, make sure you get a whole freaking pack of these zip ties because uh, you're gonna be running through them. So here is the compressor's power wire running right through and then here is the styrofoam piece that we're keeping. And uh, it's gonna sit right here. I might just have to cut a little slit out underneath the styrofoam piece so that the wire can go freely but yeah, I mean, that's how it's gonna be. All right guys, so the lines have been ran. I didn't really get too deep in depth with recording how exactly I ran the line. I figured it's just gonna be so much easier if I just run the lines myself and then show you guys what exactly I did afterwards. So let's get into exactly how I ran the lines on this car. Now keep in mind, if you guys have a BRZ or FRS, yeah, you guys can run your lines like this. Depending on what car you do it on, it's gonna be a little bit different, but all in all, it pretty much is the same thing. So let's get to the driver's side first. If you guys look behind the bag, right over here, there is our airline. It's looping down and then coming right back up into the engine bay. Coming up to the engine bay, it might be a little hard to see just because I tucked it in really well. I didn't want this getting caught on anything, but if you guys look real closely, I'll try to put an arrow up on the screen. Right there is our airline. It's going along the strut tower and then into our firewall. Right here is the airline. You guys can see I zip tied it to the harness that's already there and then uh, going into the firewall right there. Now coming into the car, like I said, we brought it through the firewall and then I tucked it along underneath of the carpet along the driver's side. You guys can see it there going underneath the driver's side rear seat into the trunk. Exactly what I just showed you guys on the driver's side, I already did on the passenger side, but on the passenger side, I put everything together. On the driver's side, I left it apart just so I can show you guys. And now coming into the trunk, you guys can see that we have pretty much all the airlines already ran. Driver's side airline is coming in from this corner along the back side of the trunk, looping around into the management. Here on the passenger rear strut, you guys can see that the airline is right over here. It's coming down. I have it zip tied to the fender liner just so it doesn't hit the tire by accident. We have the airline coming down and going right back up, coming into here. We drilled a little hole here, but the airline is coming out of this little hole, going all around the trunk along the backside, looping around just like the driver's side front and into the management. It's a little hard to show you guys, I understand that. Exactly what we did on the driver's side, we did on the passenger side. Now you guys probably also noticed that I wrapped some of the airline in this little loom. I put some of it on all four sides. Easy loom, I got this from Advanced Auto Parts. I don't know the exact specs of this or anything, but basically what it is is it's loom for wiring harnesses that go in your engine bay. So it kind of protects wires against heat. I figured let's throw some of that loom on all the hose that's gonna be near the engine bay and near the exhaust. Now, is this necessary? Absolutely not. Every single time we've ever bagged a car before, we never ran this loom, but I figured this time, why not just take an extra precautionary measure? I wanna make sure that Amanda doesn't break down on the side of the road. So I took that extra measure, 
put that loom on just to protect it from some heat and the elements. I also wrapped it down here just so a rock doesn't come up and nick the hose. Like I said, super unnecessary. You don't need to do it, but I figured why not? You guys pretty much saw that the manifold is connected to every single line. So this hose is for the front driver's side, rear driver's side, front passenger side, and then rear passenger side. And then the second to last one is for the tank. And then the last one is the exhaust. The exhaust is just so you can let out air. When you air out, the air has to go somewhere. It just exhausts the air out. Now you can route it to inside your car and it's gonna make noise inside your car. We routed it to the outside just because it can get kind of loud. We wanted the exhaust to be outside. So you're gonna hear the psh sound outside the car more. If you do run a water trap like we're doing, this tank plug needs to run to the water trap and then there's another plug on the water trap that's gonna run to the tank. Now you don't need to run a water trap. It is definitely safer to do so. So we are running a water trap. Water trap literally, all it does is pretty much in the name, it traps water and makes sure that water doesn't go into your air struts. I know it's kind of hard to see our water trap just because we hit it behind a trim piece, but that's kind of the way I like it. This little diagram right here is a lifesaver for all the visual learners out there. If for whatever reason you guys don't have it, well, here you guys go. It tells you pretty much everything, how to wire everything, fuse, battery, and even has the second compressor option. This definitely does help, but I wanted to give you guys even more of a visual representation of how airlift goes in with this car. So now that we have the air struts connected to the manifold, the last thing we need to do is connect everything into the tank and throw the tank back in here. So we need to wire the compressors to the tank and then we also need to wire the manifold or the water trap to the tank. That's the last thing we need to do and then we can throw this thing on the ground and actually see it air out for the first time. I didn't learn about this stuff until just a few months ago, but these little things right here are a lifesaver. Now, if you guys buy these air compressors or if you guys get like an airlift management kit or what have you, it never comes with this. All it comes with is the compressor and the end of the compressor looks like this. This screws directly into your tank, but because this screws directly into your tank, you don't have much of an option of where you can put your tank or compressors. You only have this much room to play around with. I've always had to keep my compressors super close to my tanks in the past, and that was really annoying until I learned about these little things. These compressor fittings screw onto your compressor and uh, you can connect a hose to the end of it. You take these compressor fittings, take your compressor hose and just screw it on. Obviously I'm not tightening it down right now, but yeah. And then you just take a hose at the end of it and then connect this hose from here into your tank. And that's it, you're good to go. I can have this compressor sitting over here and because I can connect a quarter inch hose line into it now, I can put my tank wherever the hell I want. It kind of gives you that freedom of being able to mount your compressors and tank wherever the hell you want without having to keep it this close to each other. The only company that I know that actually makes that compressor fitting is AirTech. If you guys want that product, I'll leave the link down in the description. It definitely helped me out big time. We gotta put some Teflon tape on the end of it before we actually screw it in for good, but I want to show you guys this real quick before we go any further. Connect the compressors to the air tank and then uh, get it all finished up. Starting to get a little bit harder to show you guys everything just because there's starting to be a little bit of a mess, but I'm gonna try my best to show you guys. Like I said, the compressors are right here connected to that little fitting and we have our hose connected to that fitting. We have the hose coming around the back of the trunk going all the way across and this hose is gonna connect to this side of the tank. This hose is gonna be coming along all the way to the back of the trunk and connecting to this side of the tank. Now it's time to put everything back into the trunk. We're gonna throw the spare tire back in here. We're gonna throw the styrofoam back in here and then uh, get the air tank settled in. The compressor on that side is all hosed up right here. And then the compressor on this side is all hosed up coming across right here. And then the tank management system is underneath it's kind of hard to see, but it is underneath. Right here, we have our drain once a month. It's recommended that you drain your tank entirely. And then over here, we have a little tire inflator thing. But this is the back view. Like I said, you're never gonna see it. Let's show you guys the trunk view. Here it is. All right, so this is Fox for you guys. I mean, like, I'm not gonna lie. I was a little judgy on it first. I thought it was a little too girly, but like, you're obviously a girl and this is your car. So it kind of <laughs> matches. I kind of like it. I kind of like it, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> That's <laughs> a good idea, right? It was kind of nice. We have the brush tank and then the fox fur. It looks really nice. And then underneath, you guys already know how the whole setup was. Trunk liner is in and it is looking so freaking good. <laughs> it's girly, but it's for Amanda. So it's okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> I realized that we never ended off the video. So uh, here is the final product. The BRZ is officially bagged. Amanda has been driving it around for a few days now. And uh, how you like the air suspension life? 
<laughs> Terrible. <laughs> so uh, we are having some complications with this air suspension. And uh, unfortunately, it's the AccuAir struts. I think in the video, I may have said that it's universal air struts. It actually turns out they're AccuAir struts, right? AccuAir yeah. struts? So they are AccuAir struts with C2B conversion bags. And uh, I'm not quite sure what it is. It's either the bag or it's either the strut. I think it's a little combination of both. I'm not going to lie. But uh, that is making the ride quality just god awful. The front is all right. Keep in mind the dampening is adjustable. We've adjusted it to the softest setting. The fronts are nice, but the rears are, uh, uh, they're, they're pretty <laughs> stiff, huh? <laughs> they're horrible. Yeah, they're, they are very, very stiff. We actually already have a set of airlift struts coming in for the rear, so that's gonna fix up the rear ride quality just a little bit, you know? It's gonna make it a little bit better, but uh, everything else is running pretty good, and uh, I know what you guys are waiting for. You guys wanna see this thing aired out. It is officially on the ground, and here is the first air out on camera. We already have the app connected. Here is the air out. Ooh. There we go, brother. <laughs> this thing looks so freaking good aired out right now. Oh my God, dude. Something about the stock wheels just looks so good because it's like simplistic and nice, but here is the final product, boys. I tried to show you guys everything the best I could, how we routed the lines throughout the car, how we routed it to the air strut, and just all, pretty much everything that I could explain to you guys in a video, I tried to explain it in this video to try to help anybody out that might wanna go the air suspension route but might be intimidated on actually installing air suspension. It can seem a little complicated, but if you just go at it and kind of know what you're doing, you'll figure it out along the way. It's kind of like installing coilovers, but like just a little bit more. A little than extra. <laughs> little extra, just a little extra. But hopefully this video helped you guys out. I'm gonna end off the video right over here. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I hope this video helps some of you guys out. I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.